This is the American Home Sewing Machine. This is your stitch width lever. I have it set for between four and five and I lock the stitch in uh, and um, basically to set the um, stitch width. Um, you unlock it and notice it automatically tries to go back to zero. Zero is for straight stitch. Then you want it on zero if you're doing straight stitches. Um, but we want to do a try to reset it again while I was filming. It's almost impossible. It takes two hands. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, okay, I tightened it up again. Okay, so I got it locked. Uh, but so, so it is locked. Turn to the right to lock it. Turn to the left to unlock. But I've got it locked at basically the five stitch width. Make sure the button holder is turned off so that you can do just a regular zigzag stitch. And this little red line right there you can paint it white if you want to be able to see it better um, that is that outer knob is what controls your stitch length to do buttonholes see here's the buttonhole range um, so these are really close together stitches here so see the little red line usually about two and a half is a normal standard stitch length and your reverse button is right in the middle of your stitch length so that's how that works this is your um, feed dogs for normal sewing. You push that one. For silk, you would push the middle one. And for darning and embroidery, you would put it like that. And that way you could feed it yourself. It will not, the fabric will not feed itself. The feed dogs are put down when you have a set for embroidery because that's for darning and embroidery. But if you want it to feed itself, then you want to use normal. Um, if you need to uh, wind a bobbin, this is the gear the clutch that you turn it to the left to loosen it, and then you move your this over to here so that it engages while you put your bobbin on it. Um, and uh, then when you press the pedal, the cord or the, the needle will not go up and down if you have properly disengaged the clutch. Um, and uh, then you can wind your bobbin. When the bobbin is full, it will push itself back automatically and that will turn off and then you would need to tighten this back up again. Uh, so that's how the bobbin winder mechanism works on it. And for threading it, yeah, but you, you, this can, can do twin needle sewing if you want to do that for like pin tucks or like a t-shirt hem. Um, it'll do a zigzag on the bottom with the one bobbin thread and you have to have two different separate spools of thread up here um, and then you just uh, go ahead and feed them through the standard see through this little little loop back here the little hole right there um, and then after you get it through that hole then you put it through this one this one you can just put it through a little, little slot right there and then going down the front you go underneath the you have to go in between the discs here and underneath it and then you hold this I hold the thread right here while I pull up so that it'll um, so that the thread will catch under here and you pull it up so that it goes up like that so the thread catches like this because it has to make that little it has to be caught in there and also be in uh, in there um, anyway then it's up through the take up lever and usually when you thread it, you should have the take-up lever up here. You would normally have your presser foot up when you're threading the machine. And that way it'll feed through the tension unit uh, smoothly. But after you go through the take-up lever, then this slides right through the side there, down through this thread guide, the thread guide next to the needle. And then it's feet, the needle goes in flat side to the side, and you would thread it from the left to right through the needle. Um, let's see, that's the basic information on how to use this. Um, it uses class 15 bobbins. Um, when you do your bobbin winding, besides loosening the clutch right here, um, you run your thread from here, uh, you wrap it around in between these little discs right here. You wrap the thread around the front to the back so it makes an X right there and then over here to your bobbin and you put your bobbin, your empty bobbin, you put the thread coming through the center of the bobbin 
up through the hole on the top and then you hold that thread and then you scoot it over and then go ahead and press the pedal and then go ahead and let it feed until it's full or until it's as full as you want it. If you want to stop it early, then just pull it back from here. Go ahead and cut your threads and put your bobbin in the bobbin case. But here's how you, uh, then you tighten this back up again. That's the basic uh, sewing with this American Home Sewing Machine. And um, if you were a professional, you're supposed to know to uh, uh Put your needle down before you put your presser foot down, but most of us prefer putting a presser foot down to hold the fabric before we put the needle down. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and zigzag this seam right here. So we go push the reverse I'm using my knee bar to go uh, to, instead of a pedal. And then this is just a little zigzag stitch. your seam at the end. Okay, then turn your hand wheel to raise the take-up lever until it gets to its top. Then you can raise your presser foot on the back, the little 